and so much study of bhakti and all that and knew so much just merged into me i just couldn't understand her how what she has done because normally people don't do when they are reading about devi they think all right this is devi this is mataji this is separate things they don't know they are reading about devi so she said mother i just identify is written that how you are gentle the goddess is gentle how she touches me how she looks after me how her attention is on me like there's a sentence kataksha kataksha nirikshan every glance is an inspection but the inspection not a very good word but nirikshan means inspection divine inspection so all the time i feel that it's you 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 are all the time when i listen to music i feel now see she's looking at me she's feeling me she's nourishing me all the time i feel your love that's how the bhakti comes in. so if you have vibrations that doesn't mean that they are something dry see no it means the joy of bhakti bhakti is we call it adoration this that but it's the ocean of love that is god you just get drenched into it there's no words to it and that is what when you feel you must know that you have taken the spirit as a real connection between you and your mother or your father there's no differentiation you are one in that ocean drenched in the ocean you are the drop you are the ocean you are one in that bhakti and that bhakti cannot be mechanical because not man made so to enjoy sahajoga you must know that it's not dry vibrations only but is the bhakti that is the joy of shiva's quality quality of joy that he adds to our life everything seems to be surrounded resounding same thing the joy that i am loved so much by god that god, god loves me that i have a meaning in life then the ego drops out first of all and also the conditioning drops out now the third nadi third nadi is the nadi by which we feel attached attached to someone like this is my child this is my husband this is my family this is my wife this is my father this is my mother in the beginning of sahaj yoga of everyone when they are just the beginners so they talk about their whole family my father is like this my mother is sick my mother sisters brothers this that real this thing is not well as if you see we all have taken a contract what should i do 
like today somebody said that you see uh, they lost their first child <coughs> first child they lost <coughs> because the child was sleeping in another room I said small children sleep should sleep with mother and mother must look after the children it's a simple thing I mean in India no mother would accept such a situation she'll throw with husband so what's this I have to look after the child so I said, tell them that they should sleep with the child. So that they don't believe in it. So all right, what can we do? Have we taken their contract that we should look after their children even when they don't want to listen to us? So the idea is all the time in the beginning is that, oh mother, I've been doing Sajoga for one month. But, so far, my financial condition has not improved. As if they are going to sue me for that. As if I have let them down. But they don't want to see that you have just now come to Sahaja Yoga. Or even if you have been in Sahaja Yoga for so many years, you have not been a Sahaja Yogi. Something missing, you don't deserve. Something wrong with you, not with Sahaja Yoga. But they feel that Sahaja Yoga is something which has got the contract. Immediately they'll inform you. Now somebody is sick there, somebody, 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 send five Sahaja Yogis. But what? These attachments start working within us. Now some people have seen uh, very attached to their children and they go on pampering, uh, my child, my child. And suddenly they discover the child is now, is a devil's child. The child starts answering back, seeing all kinds of things, beating the parents, misbehaving and then they suddenly discover that this is the child whom I have been looking after, giving so much love. And they feel even worse because I have done so much for my wife and she is treating me like this. I have done so much for my husband and he is treating me like this. Why do you do so much? There is no need. If you are doing it, you just do it and feel, forget it. I never feel that way. I know of Sahaja Yogis for whom I work very hard and they have gone down. Only thing if I feel anything, I know God knows where will they jump, where will they be in hell, what will happen to them, that's the only concern. Not the concern what has happened, because nothing can happen to me. But if they have been sinful, I just get worried about their future, about their lives, that's different. So this kind of attachment that is, we call it Sanskrit, is mamatra. This is my, that's my child, my this thing, my that. Who are your relations are Sahaja Yogis. Remember this. It's the sentence you must remember. My relations are Sahaja Yogis only. And anybody who plays against Sahaja Yogis, troubles Sahaja Yogis, that person could be my own wife, could be my own child, is not mine. But I'll not allow such a thing to happen. This relationship is all right till Sahaja Yogis are one with each other. As soon as somebody tries to harm any other Sahaja Yogi, then I'm not with that person. I've seen there are many like that, but very good Sahaja Yogis. They'll never side with their wives, never side with their children. Because they know if you are siding with them, you are making them sinful. You are destroying them. They are worried about their ascent. So they never allow, never allow anybody, a relation of theirs, to trouble others. I've seen some children who are extremely naughty, very troublesome, very violent. And the parents just saying, Mother, put them right. 
We leave it to you. They are to be put right. But others may say, oh, no, 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 you see, my child, he cannot do such a thing. You know. So, one has to understand the discrimination part of it. That, why am I attached? I have given this simile many a times, like the sap of the tree rises, goes to various places of the trees, various areas, looks after the bark, looks after the branch, looks after the leaves, flowers and fruits and comes back. Or it gets evaporated, doesn't get attached. If it gets involved into one of them, the whole tree will die and that part which is so close to the sap will also die. But sap has much more cells than we have. To them, husband so important. I mean, so many problems of husbands, wives, this, that. My God, I sometimes think, what is this? That's why they used to say, take a sannyasa. So nobody can talk about wife, children, nothing. You have to be a sannyasa. First of all, be a sannyasa. So no headache to the guru. As soon as you start talking about any one religion of yours, the guru would say, all right, you get out. Nothing to you. No good. But in Sahaja Yoga, Sahaja Yoga has much deeper work to do. It has to penetrate into the society, into the political life, into economic life. You have to emancipate the whole world, try to understand your responsibility. They are not only here for one ascetic ascent, no. How much wisdom you must have, how much love you must have, and how much discrimination you must have to understand that you are chosen for the emancipation of the whole world. So now this so-called limited love, what is the solution which takes you to destruction? Is the unlimited love. Because Shiva is nothing but love, he is love. Love is that corrects, that nourishes, that wants your benevolence. That's what Shiva is. It wants your benevolence. It looks after your benevolence. So when you are looking after the benevolence of others with love, then the whole life changes, the whole pattern changes. And you really enjoy it because you become one with so many concern with so many families, so many things, so many problems of others and the others. So you just feel you are one with so many. Now see, we have so many Sahaja Yogis here today. First time when I came to Italy, I must tell you, I came with Christy, no, the, what's the name of the girl's wife, huh? Catherine. And she the, was the only one who knew Italian. And we had told some newspaper to reserve some sort of a hall and advertise for us. Nothing was done. So when we came, we couldn't find anyone. So I went round with her to put the posters. But still nobody came. And today we are so many. But we must know that we are bound to each other by love. And the love that is for our benevolence, for our ascent. And then you just start enjoying everyone. Then you don't think what race you are, what country you are, what this thing you are, nothing. It's a you finished. So you become a universal being. And this 
attitude has to be achieved. When I hear that some Indian girls are tortured and troubled, I think, how can they do it? Or somebody who is a black uh, skin, they are tortured. Or some Indians are treating somebody because they are of low caste. It's not possible because they are all part and parcel of one body. They are all brothers and sisters, born of the same mother. But this is only possible when you dissolve that limited uh, relationship of yours into this great unlimited ocean of love. Then only it is possible. And if it is not there, do not try to justify. Just watch yourself. See for yourself. Are you really in love with everyone? You see, I would say that all the time when I suppose to go for shopping, I just think, oh, this one will be nice for this one. That will be nice for that one. For myself, if you say, it's impossible for me to buy anything for myself, it's an impossible situation. Unless it is absolutely immediate, or some problem is there if I, I'm just without it. I won't even buy a drink for myself, even if I'm thirsty. Because the whole thing is the joy of others. Oh, this will be nice for that person, this will be good for that person. All this is the most enjoyable thing. I mean, why all this is for there? After all, think about yourself. Why am I here? I am here to enjoy everyone, everyone. They are all realized souls, such beautiful lotuses. I am not going to stoop down to the mud. Now I am a lotus. That is the way you open the heart, the lotus of your heart. And the fragrance of such a person is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So you are no more divisive. You do not want to separate from each other. Anywhere, is done, you are agreeable to that. You don't think that it should be done here or there or there, but anywhere, but should be, all of us together. So, the small attachments that are with you have to be dissolved into this ocean of love, which is Shiva. Fourth one is the most important for all of us is to know that there is a nadi which passes through left vishuddhi into the heart, starts from the heart, goes up, passes through agya. It has four petals and opens up. This is the one which gives you the state which is called as Turiya. We live in three states. In the living, in the uh, awakened state, Jagruti, our attention goes to this, that and all that, we spoil our attention. But the second one is the one what we call is that we sleep. When we sleep also, all these things that have happened come to us from our past and things like that. But then we go to the deepest deep goddess Vishupti. It's a state where you have deep sleep and you dream of something that is reality also. You may dream about me, 
and it's the ethereal part of the subconscious where some beautiful informations are passed out. Supposing I come say to Italy, Italians might know in their Sushupti that I've come here or maybe anybody might know, depends on. But the fourth state is called Asturia. There are two more states. You are in a Turiya state, it's the fourth state. Today means fourth. Fourth state is where that you are in a thoughtless awareness state. When there is no thought, just think of it. When there is no thought, you have to be innocent. When there is no thought, you have to have vibrations. When there is no thought, you cannot be attached to anyone. So into that thoughtless state you have come now as a Turiya Adhisthiti. And in this state when you are, these four petals which are within you have to open out in your brain. They come from your heart to your brain. And that is when you absolutely understand what is God. Absolutely know what is God is. That is the time when one receives the real knowledge. But unless and until these four petals open, one may fall back. That's why some of the Sajukis who are still meddling with things that they should not do, go down. And they don't understand what is God is. But it's not the understanding, you know, you understand this one little point, that it comes from your heart into your brain, not from your brain to your heart. It comes as if the amrosa of your bhakti covers your brain, absolutely. Say so for example, Shankaracharya wrote a beautiful treatise called as Viveka Chudavani, where he described what is God, is that, and Viveka means the conscience and consciousness and all that he described, quite a lot. But there was one horrible fellow called Sarma, who started arguing with him and he got fed up, Shankaracharya. He said, no use talking to them. So he just wrote Saundarya Rari. Saundarya Rari is nothing but all the mantras praising the mother. He said, well, I know mother, now let me praise it. Nothing to it. What's the use of teeth? talking to these people? Stupid things, how will they understand? He realized that these people haven't got <coughs> that capacity, that uh, sensitivity to understand what I know, that's the real knowledge, is to know what is God. And if that is God, then how can you suspect anything, how can you try to analyze anything? It's God, it's God Almighty, it knows everything, which does everything, which enjoys everything. That is the one we should say is the jnana, is the knowledge, is the true knowledge, the pure knowledge is not the knowledge of chakras, not the knowledge of vibrations, not the knowledge of Kundalini, but the knowledge of God Almighty. And the knowledge of God Almighty is not mental. Again I tell you, it starts from your heart and goes to your brain. Something that came, comes 
out of your experience of joy and covers your brain. So your brain cannot deny it anymore. Like the, sometimes when you have your mother, little mother, you know the love of your mother. So you cannot explain, it comes from your heart. And you say, no, that's my mother, she won't do like that. I know my mother very well. The knowledge about your mother, the one who has given you birth, may not be, mother may not be very good or whatever it is, but knowledge about God, that He is love, that He is truth, that He knows everything, that just become part and parcel of your being, absolute. And that's the time we say is the Nirvana. So it's important, especially for the people of the West. Now open your hearts, because it starts from the heart, not from your brain. Do not judge people on vibrations, judge yourself all the time. I had told that Shiva Puja means more explanation, more understanding, more See, because in other pujas we do all these mantras, this, that. But in this puja is to know the knowledge is God. And to know that you know God itself is so great. Whatever it is, she may be Mahamaya, she may be anything, but I know. It cannot be described in one book, it cannot be described in hundred books. It cannot be described in words, but to know that's God. After all, that's God, God Almighty. And that gives you that beautiful surrender, where you just feel absolutely secure. in that ocean of love. I wish you all to achieve that state. May God bless you.